I hardly know where to begin. Uh, so I'll just start wherever I think I can. And the very first uh, incident that I'll talk about, it's all related to the Southern Hemisphere at the moment, is as uh, you may have heard on the news uh, last week, there was snow throughout most of South Africa. Now, there hasn't been snow in this quantity in such a widespread area in South Africa for over a century. It's not uncommon in the higher elevations for there to be snow at this time of year because uh, August is winter in South Africa. However, this was very widespread, uh, cold air coming up from the Antarctic and colliding with warm Atlantic and Indian Ocean air to create the snow. And it does, in fact, um, I won't say prove, but at least enhances what I've been telling you about an ice age starting to begin in both the northern and southern hemispheres, and it will come from uh, the extreme North Pole, extreme South Pole. And in light of that, um, I wanted to mention about some information that was sent to me from Austria uh, just a couple of days ago about revelations of the uh, hollow earth and a possible pact between the U.S. government and those in the hollow earth uh, from Antarctica that goes back many, many decades. And it goes, of course, to the uh, Nazis and the Fourth Reich. Um, and what is not really known historically is that the Germans in 1901 to 1903 were really one of the first, or maybe the first people to send an expedition to Antarctica back in that time. Uh, historically, that has been given to the Norwegians uh, back in 1913, 14, 15, when they sent the expeditions to uh, Antarctica. Uh, but it was a decade before that that the Germans sent uh, expeditions to the South Pole. And in fact, at that time, in 1902 and 1903, the Germans claimed most of Antarctica for Germany. And that is why in World War II, they took over the Norwegian part of Antarctica and created uh, Neuschwabenland, or that base 211 underneath Antarctica. And in fact, um, uh, in, in, a, in a book in 1920 uh, called A Journey to the Earth's Interior, or Have the Poles Really Been Discovered? Uh, there, the author, uh, scientist Marshall B. Gardner, uh, stated that he believed there was a pact between the U.S. and Germany, uh, stating that the, uh, the U.S. Uh, would allow Germany to develop weapons, etc., in exchange for uh, exchanging information. And in this book, he questions uh, how do scientists explain the fact that when we go north, it becomes colder up at a certain point and then begins to get warm. He also says, as far as uh, uh, the North Pole is concerned, that the farther north you go, more warm water and warm winds come from the north. When this is supposed to be a land of solid ice. Now, if you compare that to what they're saying now in 2012 and saying this is global warming, this, this was written in 1920, almost 100 years ago, and uh, talking about warmth in the northern part of the, uh, the Earth. It also states, how can they explain in the ice cliffs of the northern part of Greenland, there are large areas with red pollen from unknown plants, and they find seeds of tropical plants floating in the water. How could that be possible? They also find logs and branches of trees, sometimes with fresh buds on them, found in these cold northern waters, even in the wintertime. And also in the northern part of Greenland, uh, there is the world's greatest habitat of mosquitoes. And he questions, this is an insect which is only found in warmer countries. How could they have gotten to the northern part of Greenland when they should be from the south? And where do all the foxes and hares go which are seen traveling north in Greenland? And then they disappear. Uh, as you also know, there's been a, there had been a tremendous heat wave here in the Midwestern United States, and now it's quite cold. And in fact, uh, the, the news services are reporting that there will be no more hot air coming into the Great Lakes or the Northeast for the rest of the season. And in fact, temperatures should be below normal 
for the rest of the season. And actually, it's not as of today. <laughs> Welcome to GGN. My website is ggnonline.com, and I'm Darko. Uh, I just wanted to say it's they're actually spraying today. We've actually had cooler weather in the past, what, almost, I want to say a week, but at least a half a week. Uh, not much spraying, which was kind of unusual, nice, big, poofy, cumulus clouds. But then today, I just noticed, I was like, man, I'm hot. You know, I got the doors open and everything. It's kind of nice. And I go to look out just a little while ago, and what? They're spraying massively, just massive spraying like, you know, you've seen before. So, it, you know, they got the pressure cook effect going on where you're like, you're actually, your whole skin is hot. Everything's hot inside. Your body's hot. You can't cool down, even with AC. Um, that's because of the uh, the cloud seeding and the wells back um, uh, uh, basically ter uh, terraforming that they're doing uh, basically causing the heat so then also you have um, what the manipulation of the jet streams so uh, Swerdle has actually mentioned before you don't have to believe in everything the guy says but he's been down in Antarctica he's done the research on the Nazis the hollow earth theory and uh, I know my government's not going to tell me it's not that it's mine but they're not going to tell me what's going on scientists aren't going to tell me on tell me what's going on um, so you're not going to get answers. you got to just take all the different types of information and outlets and sources and put them together and come up with your own um, thing. You know, Look up Horizon Project and uh, look up Pole Shift. That's the same thing. Um, he says it's going to be fast within you know, like a week or a couple days, but who knows? Maybe it's slow. But basically, um, the manipulations of the jet stream and the Gulf Stream is going on. It is taking place along with HARP and the uh, cloud seeding globally so you know you have that going on as well with the bp disaster and the fukushima disaster so mississippi river is drying up i've covered this before about barges uh bottoming out it says if the mississippi continues drying up to the point where commercial travel is no longer possible it says it would be absolutely devastating blow to the u.s economy so it says uh, from an excerpt from the cnn report you might think it's some kind of desert just outside memphis and it says it's not. It's actually standing on uh, the exposed bottom of the Mississippi. It says that's how dramatic the drought impact is being felt there. And it says hard to believe a year ago we were talking about record flooding. Then we have this. This city in um, uh, Louisiana, I believe it is, Yeah, uh, calls state of emergency as salt water moves up Mississippi. It says uh, due to salt wedge that is moving up the Mississippi and could threaten to perish to drinking water. It goes on here and it says that uh, the wedge is currently moving north because of low levels in the Mississippi River and lack of rain in the upper regions on the United States. It says the leading edge of the saltwater is approaching Belle Chase, Louisiana. Of course, the authorities are declaring a state of emergency, uh, but they're also doing what? They're saying, oh, no reason to panic. Well, you know, for a lot of those preppers out there that are, like, thinking they're going to, like, start shooting everybody and stuff like that, and they're going to have their canned food and their water filters, that shit's going to run out, man. You got to think beyond that. You got to think, well, I'm going to collect rainwater. I'm going to have to siphon out of a tube, out of the ground, um, whatever I got to do, right? Maybe possibly distill from a fire and stuff like that to really make sure that it's safe. Um, I'm not going to have canned food. I'm going to look to edible foods. But that's kind of the control, and I hate to use this, the control paradigm, that word, because it's overused. Uh, but that control uh, uh, structure is set up so that you have to depend on them so that you panic when when things uh, you know people go to the, that's why they'll go to the camps voluntarily they'll go to the camps voluntarily because they'll panic because they don't understand that they can survive with all without all of those things uh, 7.7 7 magnitude quite quake strikes off russia coast so russia was hit by 7.7 7, our earthquake and this was actually from yesterday when i was covering my little a series on Russia it says here a 7.3 magnitude quake shakes north uh, northeast Japan so 7.3 that's pretty crazy on June 18th a 6.4 quake occurred in the Pacific Ocean uh, about 28 kilometers southeast of, of Ofanato so uh, also magnitude 5 tremor hits northwest Iran this is their third earthquake I think now 5.3 on the Richter scale a 6.4 earthquake rocked the city um, and also said another quake measuring 6.3 jolted the districts um, 45 minutes later. So, and of course you go through the comment boards and everybody's saying what? Uh, people of Iran are targeted by the enemy in various ways like economic sanctions, oil embargo, war threats, and now direct attack from inside Iraq with heart. So tell the Americans to take their heart machine and uh, go somewhere else. So 75 square miles of pumice from underwater volcano located uh, 
hopefully I pronounced that right, but it says here, area of floating pumice, 250 nautical miles in length and 30 miles wide, was spotted in the South Pacific Ocean yesterday by Royal New Zealand Air Force. They're calling it a phenomenon, and it goes on there, says a lieutenant of this uh, Royal Australian Navy said, it's the weirdest thing I've seen in 18 years at sea. Mysterious Louisiana sinkhole raises concerns of explosions and radiation. I meant to cover this, actually, uh, before I got to all the earthquakes. Remember, the Louisiana calls for a state of emergency as salt water moves up Mississippi. Um, you have that one. Mysterious Louisiana sinkhole raises concerns of explosions and radiation. So they talk about radiation. It didn't say anything in the article about it. But that's just to, um, uh, what do you call it, sensationalize it. But it's just worth worth noting, right, that there's sinkholes and there's stuff going on down there in the Mississippi. Fish are warmer, faster, stronger, unexpected benefits of living in a cl changing climate, uh, biologists say. So, again, they're going to blame climate change, i.e. they're blaming you. Um, but, uh, you know, just remember what Swerdlow was talking about, about the migration of birds and warm weather stuff, uh, tropical even, up in northern parts of Greenland and that. It's not so grim up north, birds and butterflies migrating to find new areas previously too cold for them. So it goes in there, they said that they live in southern England are setting up home further north because of warming temperatures. So there you go, guys. You know, if we're living in the northern hemisphere and we do have some kind of a pole shift, then places that were warmer before will be cooler. And it's not necessarily meaning that it's cooler, but they'll have more snow like in Africa than other places that were usually cooler are going to be warmer. I don't know. That's just my... That's how I'm trying to rationalize the madness here, what's going on around me. So it's here, and I don't have all the answers, you know what I mean? So if you want to make it a comment board or something like that, go ahead. It says here, biological impacts of the Fukushima nuclear accident on the pale grass blue butterflies. So the releasing of these radioactive materials to the environment are causing physiological and genetic damage to the pale grass blue uh, butterfly in Japan. Then you have this, a Flickr photo of insect identified as never before seen species. That's right. So, yeah, new species are being created, right? Or just relocating. It says here, odd-colored lobsters baffle scientists. Odd-colored lobsters coming in bright blue, orange, yellow, calico, and white have been turning up in lobster traps and waters off of Maine. So they're seeing scientists are seeing a boom in the number of these uh, multicolored lobsters in the past two years. And a whale died, a 60-foot uh, whale that was basically, they said, incredibly undernourished. So that's kind of another like little indicator that something is definitely going on when you have all these uh, whales and dolphins washing up shores, birds, dozens of dead birds fall from sky, New Jersey. It says that uh, it's found by residents that were killed on purpose and legally. What? Wow. So like I said, don't don't trust the authorities. They said here that they claimed it wasn't something environmental. Said that they uh, that killed the birds, but rather something they ate—a granular pesticide put down legally. Uh, by nearby farms, which goes into your food, so it's all legal. Great. That's a good answer. But uh, these are the same people that promote this bullshit like climate change. Study predicts imminent irreversible planetary collapse. So they're doing this, right? They're doing all this stuff with engineering, terraforming, pesticides, killing birds, and all that. Society has glo uh, collectively decided that we need to just drastically lower our population very quickly. Folks, these are authors from Simon Fraser University uh, recommending the government do this, take undertake five actions. So it says here, folks like us have to be forced to be materially poorer, at least in the short term. And they have to invest a lot more in creating technologies to produce and distribute food without eating up more land and wild species. So they're talking about GMO food and synthetics in your food fillers. For and corporations are actually sneaking synthetic preservatives into organic foods as a watchdog. And when people are aware of this eugenics operation, they do what? Chemical industry spent almost $10 million against genetically modified organism labeling. And the billionaires do battle with the phantom baby boomer overpopulation with their target, a nice black man, at the family planning summit. So how do they carry out this eugenics? 46 new county mosquitoes, dead birds, tested positive for West Nile. That's in the north. Also in Dallas and Texas, they declared a state of emergency due to West Nile. Illinois sees first case of new swine flu strain in Indiana. It was the biggest. That's must probably what I got. Don't panic before you reach for that antibacterial soap. Know that it inhibits muscle function of human heart cells and test tubes. Let's not forget about in the Florida Keys, they're going to release genetically modified mosquitoes to combat Danaig fever or the new weaponized bird flu that scientists created. Or also scientists 
uh, messing with the plague, where what? Oh, now pneumonic plague outbreaks in Uganda. A Russian scientist dies in Ebola accident. And while iodide tablets are handed out in a Pennsylvania nuclear plant town, an eight-year-old girl is forced to have chemo.